All right, so let me tell you a story that I hadn't heard before. Uh, Brandon Jackson. Uh, Brandon Jackson was getting a package a few weeks ago from Amazon. And they rang his doorbell, ding dong. And Brandon Jackson has all Amazon services in his house. His whole house is a smartphone or a, a smart house. And uh, it's fantastic. Even the doorbell. And the doorbell he had automated. So when you, when you ring the doorbell, the doorbell says, may I help you? Well, this, this Amazon driver heard, and I want, to get the, I want to get the exact thing, excuse me, can I help you? That's what the automated response said. Excuse me, may I help you? Well, he had his headphones on, and we know because, you know, the doorbell recorded everything. Uh, and he said, how dare you? And uh, took the package, got back into the car, and then called Amazon and said, I've just been called a racial slur. And so what did Amazon do? Well, they, they shut down. Again, the name I want you to, to remember here is Brandon Jackson. A guy you'll probably never meet, never hear of again. But you should know because I think this is a first. Amazon... Uh, instead of calling Brandon, their customer, instead, they just shut his house down. So he went to his smart house and uh, tried to open the door and uh, couldn't open the door. Uh, when he got inside, he couldn't turn anything on because everything was off because his, his, what is it, Amazon Echo was unresponsive. They shut him out of everything. Everything. It took him a week before Amazon responded and went, oh, you, you looked at the video? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how he did it, but he looked at the video and showed the response was, excuse me, can I help you? It wasn't me. It was your service. And he actually went on and said, I don't think this guy was trying to make a false claim. I think he was wearing headphones and just misinterpreted the message. Uh -huh. Jackson, well, listen to this in the story. Jackson is now questioning his reliance on Amazon services. Really? Huh. I don't know if I had been locked out of my house for a week and nothing really worked. And the company that I was paying didn't have the respect to call me and say, hey, dude, what's going on? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I do more than question Amazon service or my reliance on Amazon. First of all, this is exactly what I told you yesterday. I was sensing in uh, England and Great Britain. I told you a couple of stories. Uh, uh, one uh, was about being left by a, a bus service. Okay, we were on this tour, and they had this tour bus that they had rented and had it the whole time. Uh, but they kept switching drivers, and they were really great, except for this one day. And they just dumped us off, and they were told, because I, I heard them, they were told, wait here, and that's where all the buses were waiting, and I have your cell phone. I will call you when we're done, but it will be 90 minutes. We're on a tight schedule today. Okay, so I heard all that. We go away, 90 minutes, and our tour guide is like, we got to get back to the bus. We got to get back to the bus. We got back to the bus, and there was no bus, and uh, so he, he called. Uh, hello, where are you? But they didn't answer. They didn't answer for like an hour and 20 minutes. So the tour guide was a little upset and called and said, what are you doing to me? Where is the driver? We have their number. They were told to wait, blah, blah, blah. They said, well, we don't know. Well, okay, 
well, can you find them because, or send another bus because I got people standing here on the sidewalk waiting for a bus that nobody seems to know where it is. I don't know, 15 minutes later or so, the bus driver arrives. Doesn't say a word. The next day, I see the tour guide. And he said, hey, I got a, uh, I got a call from the bus company, the manager of the bus company. And I said, really? Did you get yesterday for free? And he said, no, they actually said, and this is a company that has done a lot of business, a lot of business with this bus company. Um, I got a call from the manager and they said, they're not sure they want our business anymore. And I said, what? He said, yes, the manager didn't appreciate the tone of my phone call. And uh, uh, although he didn't hear it, I didn't talk to him. I talked to somebody else that was answering the phones for them. And I asked for a manager. Um, Apparently, they reported that my tone was a little off-putting. Huh. Also told you a story yesterday at the end of the show about going to a place that was like a, I don't know how to describe it, like a haunted house. It was a, it was a historic torture site, but they had made it into some kind of thing where, you know, you go in and, and you're sentenced and then you go through and you see what happened, what life was like, you know, 500 years ago. Uh, by the way, not good for all of you who just want to take us back to the dark ages. Not good. Not good. So one of the guys in our group, and there were about, I don't know, eight or ten of us, one of the guys is Scottish and is kind of a smartass. And, uh, and I was reading the rules of this place. I'd never seen anything posted like it. Usually it's posted like you got to be this, this tall to ride this ride. This was all the rules were to protect the employees from you. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, Scotland is a rough place. I even talked to everybody in the family about it. I'm like, look at this. Have you ever seen anything like this? Who's going through this place? You will not touch. You will not grab. uh, You will respect the employees. You will not be inappropriate. Wow, okay. So we go through the first room. We're being judged. And this guy comes up and he's in the powdered wig and everything. And he's like, silence. I'm like, oh boy, this is getting so real. And he's like, you, he points to my wife. You look like a witch. Now, I had a few things that popped into my head to respond, but I didn't say them. And then he went and he humiliated all of us. Okay. And then he said, to the guy who happens to be Scottish and not the guy to pick, he said, you, you're first. Get in the box. So he gets into the trial box, and the first question for the judge is he's standing up there with a gavel. He says, where were you last night? And my cohort said, well, if you really want to know, you should ask your mother. Now, we laughed. Is it inappropriate? I don't know. Maybe in second grade, yes. The judge looked at him and said, do you realize how inappropriate that is? And we all thought, wow, he's a good actor. This seems real. He said, that is inexcusable. Put his gavel down and walked out of the room. Didn't say anything else. And we're like, is this part of the show or what? What just happened? We wait a few minutes. The manager comes in and says, I don't know if you saw the rules posted, but please do not say inappropriate things to our employees. They have a hard enough time. Oh, okay. Now we all were thinking we should just leave. But 
nobody said it out loud, so we all went through. We said it after we got through with the whole thing. We should have just left. And everybody was like, yeah, I was thinking of that. I should have said something. Um, so we go through. The very next room is the torture chamber. And somebody has to be strapped to the chair. And the guy looks at the same guy that has your mama jokes and says, you. So he straps him down to this chair and he shows him, you know, I'm going to do this to you and I'm going to do this to you. And he's showing all of the torture tools that were used. And then he takes out this big, you know, like clamp or scissor, you know, weird thing. And, uh, and he brings it down to his pelvis area. He said, you know what this is for? My friend doesn't say a word, okay? Because we're all sweating at this point. Oh, dear God, don't say anything. Doesn't say a word. You know what this is for. <laughs> and then he turns around to the table, and he gets, like, little tweezers. And he's like, but for you, <laughs> I'd probably use these. Now, I thought to myself, now that's wholly inappropriate. Much more than your mama. What I realized from these two things, we're being put into a situation to where the customer is never right. You're lucky they serve you. And if you say something that they don't like, you're punished. You're paying for the service. You're you're the customer. You're the one that just ordered things on Amazon and have purchased every little device to run your house from Amazon and are paying Amazon a monthly payment. And they don't call you when one of their employees says, this person just called me a racist name. They don't even call. They don't check. They don't do anything. Because you don't matter. That's the world we are entering. And it's happening everywhere. The worst part is it is happening in business, in government, and in the business of public-private partnerships, business and government. Did you know the Pentagon has, has just released, uh, like, like no big deal, I guess, that they have a special team that goes on social media and looks for people who are saying bad things about any of their generals? I don't really know the names of many generals, but all the generals that were involved in Afghanistan, you suck. And I don't have to post that online. I just say that all the time. Now, maybe Amazon is listening, and maybe I'll get through. I'll get in trouble because of Amazon. But it would be your Amazon that is getting me in trouble right now, not mine. I really think that we all need to do what, what he was saying. Maybe we need to question our reliance on Amazon's service and, uh, and maybe own our own information, and own our own devices. Wouldn't that be a refreshing thing? By the way, he went on to say, I fully support Amazon taking measures to ensure the safety of their drivers. This isn't about the safety of their driver. Their driver was never in jeopardy. Even if he was called names, he was never in jeopardy. He was never out of he was never in a dangerous situation. What are you talking about? <laughs> words. Sticks and stones may break your bones, but words really hurt so much more. Be careful of who you're reliant on.